join in the conversation with a question or a comment on Twitter just by using the hashtag MKTDay or by emailing us at yourmoneyatskynews.com.au and we'll try to answer it for you right here on the program. So let's get straight into it. Julia, today really was all about that fall in the iron ore price overnight, sinking down to around 90 US a tonne. Huge impact on the sector. Talk us through some of the stocks that were most hardest hit. We did see that iron ore uh, price being very much uh, in, in focus on the Australian share market and those iron ore miners being hit quite hard. We saw BHP down by 2.4%, Rio Tinto down by 3.8%, while Fortescue managed to uh, steps aside of a lot of the carnage down by just 1.6 percent and Fortescue has been helped by the news that we have seen Twiggy are buying up shares in the last few sessions and so that's helped to buffer the share price so of course the market's looking at the impact these uh, lower prices are having on the iron ore miners and if we have a look at spot prices they hit $90.30 US a ton overnight we've also seen Bayer Steel's head of purchasing coming out at an industry conference during the Asian session talking about second half iron ore demand and he thinks that it's going to be flat or that we could even see it go down. So a lot of downward pressure in terms of those iron ore miners. However, even with prices at that 90 US a tonne level, most of our iron ore, at least our biggest ones, are extremely profitable. We have a look at BHP, Rio, as well as Fortescue. They uh, produce iron ore and they get it um, uh, to the suppliers at about, uh, to, at about 40 US a tonne. Even if we have a look at uh, iron ore miners like Atlas and Arium, they get it there about 50 US a tonne. I guess what you'd want to avoid at the moment are any undeveloped resources um, of iron ore or if those higher cost uh, producers. And if we have a look at some of those higher cost producers, they are stocks like Cidic, uh, Jindalbi, as well as Grange Resources. If we have a look at Cidic, they produce at about 73 US a tonne. If we have a look at Jindalbi, about 75 US a tonne. And then if we have a look at um, Grange Resources at about $102 a tonne. So I guess those higher cost producers are ones which are most vulnerable. But of course, the other side of the equation is the amount of debt that some of these iron ore miners have, especially with the huge ramp up in a lot of these projects that we're seeing. So I guess the most vulnerable in terms of uh, the leverage that we see on the market are the likes of Fortescue as well as Arium. So those iron ore uh, miners very much in focus and I guess pretty much the only story of the day. So unfortunately not good news for the Australian market given what a large chunk uh, the material sector makes up of the Aussie Shema. So now we're and truly fading that we will see any uh, concrete action from Ben Bernanke from Jackson Hole at his speech tomorrow? I think that's reflected in the asset price action that we've seen ever since Draghi uh, pulled out of Jackson's Hole, the Jackson Hole meeting. We have seen uh, the US dollar strengthening up, the Aussie dollar being a little bit lower, and we have seen uh, weakness in terms of com commodity prices. So I think there are uh, there are less expectations in terms of more quantitative easing being announced at Jackson Hole. Although we have see, seen Bill, Bill Gross saying QE3 is coming, um, no matter what Ben Bernanke says at Jackson Hole, um, that it's on its way. So I guess in terms of um, the, the event risk uh, this week, it has lessened and the markets have been positioning themselves for uh, no QE to be announced at uh, Jackson's landing. But altogether, the commodity price weakness is certainly a key risk for the Australian market and we've really seen that being the key factor driving our market this week. I guess in terms of just those iron ore prices as well, we always talk about China and the slowing down of the growth rates in China being a key factor in uh, the softness that we're seeing in iron ore as well. And we don't talk too much about Europe, but Europe traditionally, uh, if we have a look at their demand for iron ore, it's about 130 to 140 million tonnes per annum and that's down at about 87 million tonnes per annum as well. So that's certainly having an impact in terms of the demand supply side of the equation as well, although this does tend to be a seasonally soft part of the year. But altogether, we are watching Ben Bernanke's speech, but it does look like iron ore prices a bigger drive around of our market at the moment. The stock in focus was Lendlease coming out with its results today. Bit of a, a bit of a bright spot really on the market, given the weakness we saw across the board with materials. What did you make of its results and outlook? So coming in ahead of expectations and the outlook also looking quite bright as well. Now in FY13 they will face a higher tax uh, rate than they did in FY12 which really helped the results along but it's all about Barangaroo and this is a key driver of growth. In terms of Barangaroo there's expected to be a development profit of about $87 million booked in FY13. Also they have a 25% interest which means for every tower 
they end up selling, they also book about 40 to $45 million worth of profit per tower. So we're going to see Barangaroo really becoming a key focus and a driver of that profit in FY13. So the outlook looking quite strong and a, a welcome distraction away from those iron ore plays today. All right.